Hello, everyone, and this is Stacey Ch Telemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Charlotte Adams. Charlotte has a podcast on our series, and she is a po podcast um, community uh, in, uh, person who on our team who does beautiful videos and podcasts on um, different ways of learning through music. And today she's going to discuss confidence, competence, and commitment and how it affects our lives. And so Charlotte, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and tell everybody what you do? Well, I'm a guitar instructor and a music educator. Um, so I've been doing that for over 50 years. I started teaching guitar when I was really young. And of course I've played guitar all my life and you know have a performing history. And I have grown from being just a typical, you know, see people all day teaching guitar into more and more about teaching people how to learn. And I've, I've written a bunch of books that are method books for guitar, but also my two books that you and your guitar is really about how you can, if you choose, teach yourself or work with a guitar teacher to become your own best teacher, which is what you have to do when you practice every mm -hmm. week see your teacher such a short amount of time compared to how much you actually play your guitar. So it's about learning. It's about really knowing yourself better. And it's something that you can apply to any area of your life, anything you want to learn, which is whatever you do, you're learning. Right. So that's that's what I'm doing now. And I write a bunch of articles. And uh, as I said, I've written seven books. and um, And now I'm talking to you. <laughs> lucky me <laughs> I think it's amazing and I, I'd love to hear more about your theory about confidence competence and commitment and what that means to you yeah thanks so the last time we talked um, you had said a time or two when we were discussing mindset and the importance of it and learning guitar or anything else and you said you just got to believe in yourself and I thought about that ever since then, because at the time I brought up the uh, the movie, Mr. Holland's Opus, and how, you know, it's it's an important concept to believe in yourself. It's an important thing to do. But, but what does that mean? And the pitfall of thinking just believing yourself is going to be enough. And I think you brought up, too, you know, if you believe in yourself, then you'll have the confidence to go forward and do the work. Right. Which is so true. But there's a leap. So if you don't, well, first of all, believing in yourself can mean different things to different people. It's just right. kind of a broad, broad concept. And so I wanted to break that down and see what does it mean to most people? I actually looked it up as we all do on Google and said, what does it mean to believe in yourself? And the consensus is that you have faith in your abilities or your capabilities. But if you don't, then it's a leap to just tell somebody, oh, just believe in yourself. Right. That's like saying, you know, oh, just relax. <laughs> yeah. I can't, you know. And <laughs> so, and in fact, I think it can be, you know, it's potentially um, damaging in a, in a small way because if you can't do something and somebody's telling you, oh, you just got to do this, then it can feel like, oh, well, I really can't even do that, you know. Right. So, so help me. And as someone who's spent her life teaching, I never stop learning how important it is to go back and take those steps, you know, to meet the person where they are. Right. And try and get inside their head and their heart enough that you can lead them to the place they want to be. Right. So learning, you know, there's a lot of learning strategies I talk about in my books and, and articles, but really it's just like, you know, learning, get, gathering learning strategies is just like learning guitar or anything else that you have right. to start with a foundation yes. and from there and sometimes the foundation for learning a particular thing on the guitar or whatever it is you're studying means going back and learning how to do something like believe in yourself right so um so what does that mean and how do you do it i think and that's that's what i came up with the words confidence, competence, and commitment. Now, in you and your guitar, I do talk about the competence-confidence loop. You can say the one first, it's a loop. So 
if you have confidence, then it can propel you toward doing the things that you need to do to build competence. Mm -hmm. Or if you if you have sufficient competence, then it will increase your confidence. So those two you really come up together. They're interlocked. And then there's commitment, which I'm going to get to in a minute. So actually, you can probably figure it out. You know, like if you want to jumpstart, like if you don't have confidence or competence, the easiest thing to do is to make a commitment so that you can build competence. And then when you get that competence, it will make you more confident, which will fuel your desire to continue to commit and gain more competence and then becomes an upward spiral. Right. And this, again, this applies to anything in life, which is right. pretty cool. So um, if you, if you, if you increase that confidence, um, it seems like a simple thing. You get the competence and then you increase the confidence, but there's some pitfalls there too, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, we all have different experiences. So a lot of times someone will have virtually no experience in acquiring competence or confidence, or maybe just anywhere on the continuum might be their experience. And so if you don't, then you may not recognize your competence. Right. So you might be building competence, but not building confidence. And I, I like you know, I want to point out that phrase building confidence. There's a reason. You don't just like, I'm going to throw you a big bunch of confidence here. But you have to build confidence. Right. right. So um, I I work with people quite frequently who achieve a level of competence that they don't recognize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what I do. I, I don't stay on the sidelines and cheer like, you can do it. You can do it. You know, nothing, no false confidence, but honest authentic wow did you notice what you just did and they'll go no a lot of times i'll say no listen to this five minutes ago you were doing this and now you're doing that so i shine a light on their accomplishments and then the second thing that i do is to help them understand the difference between those accomplishments that are valuable yeah. And those that they can just like, oh, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. You'll get that. So that brings up another thing that happens sometimes, quite frequently, actually, with, and it happens with smart, competent people. Right. Mostly, is that they, uh, they might even recognize that they've made progress, but it's not good enough for them. They don't value it sufficiently because they're perfectionists in one way or the other. Now, right. every other part of their life, they might not have this problem. But if they're learning something that's foreign to them, like maybe they're a person who's very accomplished in business. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're very accomplished in a lot of things that are more left brain, but they, but the right brain, the arts are a mystery to them. And so they don't get um, which aspect of this process to run with. Right. That's my job to say. I, <laughs> I like this part of my job. Mm -hmm. I like all of them. But to say, no, 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 that's fine. You got it. You got it. You got to just keep doing this and you're going to, that's going to come along on its own. Or no, let's build up this because that's when you're really going to see it. So um, I'm kind of running a long time here without you saying anything. But oh, no, 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 no. I'm on a roll. <laughs> 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 yeah. So what happens with the, this type of person is um, they they will have these accomplishments and then um, if I can point out that's fine then they can gradually get there but maybe they're struggling with it when they're practicing when I'm not there or maybe they're trying to teach themselves which is right. what I'm trying to empower people to do with you and your guitar as I yeah. said, if you have a teacher, you're still going to be teaching yourself a lot of right. time. So that's where you can learn some strategies to assist you. Mm -hmm. and 
you know, I mentioned it on you and your guitar. It's a small book with a journal. And the journal looks like, oh, that's just a pretty book. You can, you know, when, when am I going to practice? Did I practice it? Right. But, you know, I think I mentioned the last episode, there are all kinds of other things to it that you might not realize the value in. Um, making notes on things that inspire you, making notes on things that are visually beautiful or sounds you hear or ideas you have. But also what I didn't bring up because uh, it wasn't in that context is that if you write down everything you do, you can go back and say, look, six weeks ago I was doing this and now I'm doing that. So you have right. an objective scale, really important. And yeah. you can also video yourself or audio recordings of yourself. That can be a little tricky because if you're like me <laughs> and most of us, you listen to it or you watch it, you go, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm not like that now, but I mean, for many, many years I was. Yeah, yeah. You're embarrassed by your own performance. But I'm telling you, things that I recorded when I was coming up and I was, I remember being embarrassed by and I go back years later and listen to it and go, holy moly. Why was I embarrassed by that? That right. totally knocked it out of the park. If yeah. I had somebody else do that, that I would have been coming back for more, right? Right. So you have to be careful with that to not be in the judgment mode, judgment mode. And that's another thing we talk about in you and your guitar and in my lessons with people is that you know you can critique yourself without judging yourself. Yes. That's an art. You build it, <laughs> you grow mm -hmm. it just like you do these other skills. Yeah. So um if you if you record yourself, if you make notes, um, write down your accomplishments. And then also what I referred to before is find out what's uh, what's important, like what's going to propel you forward the most quickly. And, and another thing is find out what's realistic. Right. Because what I have seen people lose confidence and give up or, you know, like I push them through so they don't give up, but before they get to me or maybe yeah. just talk to um they don't invest enough to get the reward they're expecting right it's not gonna happen so you know it looks like oh this person just says this so easily yeah well you know for me I've been playing guitar all my life I could pick up something and practice it a couple of times and say okay let's take it you know let's let's do a recording of it or something but yeah. no not 30 40 years ago 50 years ago no that wasn't going to happen. You need more repetitions than people understand or yeah. believe. They don't get that practice doesn't mean do it until you get it right and move on to the next thing. I mean, I say this a lot of times in lessons, especially the younger the person is, the more, so, well, sometimes with, yeah, it doesn't matter. I have to say this to people, is that when you practice, and I think I put this in the book too. I put it somewhere. Anyway, mm -hmm. when you practice, you work at it until you get the desired result. Okay, that's correct. I got it. Then you start practicing. Right. That's when practice begins. And then you may need 100 repetitions, not one or two. See, so that's part of creating competence, growing your competence. So you have to commit just you know it's an act of faith yeah you say my teacher told me I could do this the internet told me I could do this Joe Schmo does this I I'm gonna do it right and you just stay with it as long as it takes you don't come back out until you've got what you want it may take six months it may take six seconds yeah but you stay with it and don't pop back out of it again uh and that that's crucial that's really crucial and so but it's still easier to start with the commitment <laughs> yeah, it's more like something you can you can almost touch it you, it's on your schedule yeah you, know, you go sit down in the chair and you do it right and then that builds confidence too because you see oh I did this every day for three months and look where I got this is pretty awesome right yeah, so the commitment has to be there. And then the confidence and the competence grow together. 
I think, I think, you know, it's funny because we're our worst critics, I think, you know, and the best, the, the, the best way to learn is to be able to learn from someone by getting, get, get to the point where you, you can do it by yourself. And I think that's the whole point of it. Just like as a parent, you parent your child to a certain point until they're competent enough and old enough to live on their own and take care of themselves. And that's the goal, I think, even with learning and learning the guitar and learning in general is being able to have that 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 confidence, that commitment and that competence and being able to apply those three things together where you become more um, you, you believe in yourself like we were talking and you 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 use that belief to 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 work at something that you have a passion for and then you continue until you get to the point where you can do it you know by yourself without someone watching over you and, and teaching you and it, it's uh it's a very rewarding feeling once you can get it by yourself you know I think that's the best accomplishment is when you're able to do it by yourself and you don't have Absolutely. someone holding your hand. I'm really, that is so, such a great thing. I'm so glad you brought this up because it's really important. Um, and that, that kind of goes, I'm going to take it a little, you know, talk about it a little bit more if I may, because it's autonomy. So we are constantly seeking, seeking answers from without. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get it for you. You're right. going to you're going to have to do it. And so, you know, when I see a lot of people, and this has this has gotten a lot worse over the many, many, many years I've been teaching. And I think it's because of uh, the way children learn and also because of the internet. We want this like everything really quick. Yeah. Uh, but what happens is people don't dig. I call it digging. Like if you mm -hmm. don't have an answer, you know, I'm, I'm self-taught on almost everything. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time to learn things. That right. was one of my motivations when I started teaching. It's like, I'd like to be able to hand you this in a fraction of the time it took me to get it. But you mm -hmm. know what? I learned a lot doing that, a lot. Yeah. And and I not only learned a lot about guitar, which would be enough right there, mm -hmm. but I learned a lot about learning and about myself, and I gained this confidence. So I, you know, if there's something that somebody's done, I go, okay, I can do it. I can do that. They did it, right? Right. So, so what I see in lessons a lot of times, people just like, well, tell me, tell me this. Well, tell me that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, it's in front of you. I mean, it's, it's astounding. Um, I'll, I'll say, okay, well, here's the book, you know, that you're working out of. Can you just, and I'll just give them to read it out loud. Read me that first paragraph. And they read the paragraph out loud. And they go, oh, after having said, I read this page 12 times and I don't get it. <laughs> well, read it again and try reading it out loud. Try reading it more slowly. Try read one sentence and then digest it or process. Yeah. You know, there are ways to do this. Go look up a term you don't know. Right. And there's a chord that you don't recognize. See what chord it, re it relates to that you do recognize. See if that sounds right with it. You yeah. Know, make connections. Dig deeper, dig deeper, dig deeper. And that's when you get what you're talking about is that autonomy, which is powerful. That's when you're empowered, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and when you're talking about like teaching your children, you know, I mean, that's how I've done that so many times with teaching kids. I'll say, well, what's, you know, what's this note? And I'll say, well, do you know what this note is? Mm -hmm. A. Well, what comes after A? B. I want them to say it. Yes. I want them to look at it and say it, not just have me say, oh, it's a B. Right. And amazingly enough, I've had people, parents sitting in my waiting room just where they can hear us and they will yell the answer to this, to the child when I'm, <laughs> I'm asking a question. I'm like, well, I'm asking this person the question. Yeah. And so then I get a clue as to why this kid doesn't dig even a little bit. Yeah. But we need to dig a lot to yes. really get that experience. The, the, the and experience that feeds us that we're looking for. Yeah. It helps you grow as a person. When you start to really, you do, you know, 
the the best way is is to say, say things out loud, and then it really absorbs in your brain. You know, when you're rushing and you're reading through quickly, unless you're visualizing it and you're and you're reading slowly, it usually takes you a couple of times if you're doing it slow and you're visualizing. But if you're just reading through something, most likely it's not going to click. You know, but when you have someone saying it, making you saying it out loud, and you hear yourself say it, that's even more powerful. That's like one of the best learning techniques is to be able to say it out loud and, and listen to yourself. And even when I would do things, I would record myself and then listen back. And that would help me. And that would actually help me memorize things better and, and do things better. Because and and I think that is a flaw in today's society when you mention, you know, parents kind of pamper the children a little too much in order for a child to be strong and to be competent. And to be able to learn and and then grasp that passion to want to learn more, they need to do it on their own. They can't have their parents helping them. They can have their parents encouraging them and commending them on the good job they did. But it's really the, the child's responsibility to actually learn, I think, because that way, you know, the, the harder they work, the more they're going to value themselves and their accomplishment, I think. I totally agree. And, you know, you also made me think of something else when you were talking about, you know, when you read, if you slow down, read a few times, read that loud. Really, isn't that the same thing I was saying about practice? Mm -hmm. People expect too much too soon. They think, oh, I've read that and I don't get it. Right. I mean, I hear that from the majority of adults I teach. I've read this and it just didn't make any sense. I'm like, well, <laughs> read it again. Read yeah. it more you know, like we were talking about. And I think the expectations are too high. Right. So you, you think you're supposed to just be able to read something really quickly and move on. No, no, no. If you're really smart. You'll dig into that. You'll dive deeper into it. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And nothing yeah. ever comes easy, you know, and, and, and you know, it, everything takes persistence and hard work. And those are the best, mm -hmm. the best outcomes come with hard work and you appreciate it more. You do. And that's the other thing that I think a lot of people shy away from. Oh, I don't want this to be work. I want it to be fun. Well, yeah. I call it fun work. It's fun because challenges and victories are fun. So I think I brought this up last time. But, you know, if you play, you know, the same person that might be going, oh, this is too hard. I don't want to do this too hard, might really love playing the video game where they're totally we're like are a sport you know yeah. a lot of other things it's the context your expectations and i think probably for a lot of people if not all of us it also is a reflection like i should be able to do this you know that's right. that's the only word that i ask people not to use you should mm. right really so why should you be able to do this now because <laughs> i don't think you should be able to do this now i think right. you know, at some point you will be able to do it right but there's a process to go through. Yeah, no, there definitely is. You know, any type of learning, you know, um, is, is going to take time and, and hard effort. Everything comes with, with effort and, and hard work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think just our, our society today, everyone wants everything easy. And because you can look up things so easily, people, you know, that they, they try to take the easy route. But I don't think it really, it's not as easy as it looks unless you really... Um, you know, they, you know, they have these programs, learn how to use the piano in 30 days and how to, how to play the piano in 30 days. You know, it's like silly things, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's, it goes beyond that, you know? And, uh, I remember I had a piano teacher, she came all the time and I got to a certain point. It was hard, you know, it got very difficult, you know? And, and then this software on their advertising is going to teach me how to play the piano in, 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 in 30 days when I had a woman come to my house and teach me right next to me. And it was, it was, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't easy. You know, it takes, it takes time and you have to pay attention. And I think people, sometimes their minds wander, you know, and they really have to be focused, I think. Perfect thing. Thank you for bringing that up too. That's huge. You can't do it while you're watching TV. Yeah. Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this up and I'll probably bring it up more than once in this series because I have, you know, not everybody agrees with this. And some very famous guitarists will actually tell people, oh yeah, practice in front of the TV. I'm like, don't 
practice in front of the television or anything else. Right. Put your phone outside or turn it off or don't check your text or emails or whatever. when you're practicing. Do you want to practice or not? Because, right. you know, you're going to get the most out of it when you put the most into it. Yes. But the other thing about this, why I'm so rabid about it, is that when you play an instrument, and I, I will bet most, if not everybody, goes through this. You play an instrument, you practice and practice, and then you get in front of somebody and like, whoa, it, it all just falls out from under you. are like, what happened? I had this so <laughs> great. I'm so devastated that this is so awful. Well, don't you think that that some of that has to do with the fact that you've done, had this attitude, like, I'm just going to get it in my fingers. Mm -hmm. It's not just in your fingers. It's in your head and your heart. Yeah. Mind. So, so your fingers will do what your head and your heart tell them to. Right. But your head and your heart aren't going to respond to just like rote stuff happening out here. Right? Yeah. What happens is this is my theory, <laughs> but mm. I've lived it. I'm in my, I live in the body and I've taught thousands and thousands of students you take this attitude that you practice with and you take it out somewhere else. And now what have you got? You've got it in your fingers, but you don't have it in your ear sufficiently. You don't have it in your logical mind. You don't have connections made like, yeah. oh, this part goes with this part. or And you don't have the theory part like, oh, wait, I played this in the key of A. This is probably going to be an E chord. You yeah. don't have a lot of things. All you've got is muscle memory. That's the right. first thing that's going to fall out from under you when you get in front of people. It right. is the first thing. So if you have all those other things and no muscle memory, you're golden. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had songs that I hadn't played in years or I've forgotten. I thought, oh, and I went through that whole thing. This is the this is the logic behind it. This is how it sounds. And yeah. I had the whole thing and find out later, even if it's complicated with lots of fingering, like, I was playing a different key. Right. Because I could do that. Mm -hmm. See? So... This is why, you know, oh, I can't remember these things or I get nervous. If you don't practice in front of television, you're going to increase your chances of success with those right. things. But also, you're going to increase your chance of satisfaction. Oh, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. You know, and I always think that, like, why would you do one thing and put your head someplace else? Exactly. You're not honoring the thing you're doing. Yeah. Right? I agree. And I think that, you know, when I, when I listen to different musicians and I listen to people play the guitar, I think the, the biggest and the best players were players that had a compassion for it, who had a lo true love for it. And it, you, I think you need that, that love, that love for music, that love, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, you, you could learn anything, but are you going to be good at it? And I think the people I've seen people in the music industry and they, they play, and they're okay, but they don't have the same, they don't sound the same. And they, as the person who has the love for it, it's just, it just, you could just tell, you could tell how they play. You could tell by their facial expressions. You could tell by their body language. It, it, it shows, it shows. And you can tell by the sound usually. Yeah. The sound definitely. Because they're emoting. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's really important, you know, to have, you know, to, when you really have the, the confidence, the competence and the commitment, and you, you have all three of those together and you really believe in yourself and you take the time out to really learn it and, and do it the right way. Like you mentioned, you know, saying it out loud and to really practice and practice without the TV and, you know, and, and not to be so hard on yourself too. I think, I think, you oh, know, yeah. I think people, we, we're the worst critics of our own selves. And we have to, like you mentioned earlier, we have to give ourselves credit, you know, for what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, we have to be willing to be uncomfortable. I think a lot of people don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I've ever gotten that I, that I, most things that I treasure in my life, I've been pretty uncomfortable getting there, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and then you have to, to be willing to go through the process. Yes. I think that's just the biggest difference. So if you have somebody that say it's a family member and they're trying to be encouraging, but maybe they're not very successful at it because, um, they don't, 
it, it feels superficial, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You can do it. But you know, I'm a cheerleader for my students, but I'm not just somebody that's standing on the side going, yeah, you can do it, you can do it. I'm saying, I know you can do it because I trust the process. Right. I know the process. And if you go through this process, you will do it. That's a different thing. So, so keep, you know, you can do some things to, to help you with that. Like you can listen to this podcast again and hear me say, you can do this. Right. Go through the process. The process is laid out in my book. And it's not just, um, you know, new guitar, it's not just about character skills. It's also about do this first and do that first, you know, try do this kind of exercise, do these kind of, learn these kind of chords. Learn these yeah. Kind of, and, and so you, you get step without, skipping steps you, right you get the process and at the same time in the same way that you're building up confidence and competence simultaneously they kind of go like this they're not mm -hmm. always going to be even you're building up ideally this is the way I teach and what I hope my hope for people is that you build up your skills your mechanical skills you you improve your ear you continue to to train your ear right you broaden your uh ways of listening the things that you listen to and the things that you can understand yes. are, you you're bringing all these things up at the same time which is another thing I'm glad that I kind of went off in that direction because you have to also listen to me say this and you <laughs> step back and listen again and again I'll be your cheerleader um to know that when you're building these things up since you're building so many things at the same time you may not see this big thing like oh i'm so much better right then you get to a certain point and then things come together it's like whoa how did that happen yeah exactly yeah that's so true now yeah. if you, you had to take everything that we talked about today and summarize it what are some takeaways that you would want your listeners to really to remember and to you would like to emphasize that you feel is important uh, I think, you know, kind of going back to the first things that I talked about is that, you know, you're for success, um, optimal success, whatever that means to you, then the three things, competence, confidence, and commitment are going to be required. Yes. Um, but the easiest thing and the one you can rely on the most is commitment. So mm -hmm. you just get in there. You make a commitment. It could be small. Right. Large. don't make an unrealistic commitment don't say i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna learn guitar i've never picked up a guitar and i'm gonna practice two hours a day no you're not right you don't have two hours worth of stuff to do your hands are going to get too sore you're potentially injuring yourself and you're going to feel horrible right realistic and again you can go to my website and get some tips on that get some guidance or you can write me or you can book a consultation or whatever but you know go go to the site and see what you can get for free um and then um yeah so make the commitment and then stick with it period now, right if you're not in the mood to go into that practice room go anyway right you'll be amazed in 15 minutes you'll find out oh i'm feeling so much better you know mm -hmm. you'll hook into it. 15 minutes is kind of a um, I've always thought it was kind of a magical time. Like if you make yourself sit and do, even if it's just finger exercises or scales or sight reading, you not that have to be inspired playing. Do right. something for 15 minutes. And then if you're not hooked into it, go ahead, go. You're, you're free to go. Right. Chances are you will stay for another 15 or, or another 30 or you know whatever. Yeah. Make a commitment. Daily is better. Because then you're not having to remember and meet these things. Like it's just something you do every day. You brush your teeth, you eat dinner, you know, do this. It's part right. of your routine. So make a commitment and then be aware, just be aware that this of this confidence competence loop and go toward that. And work and tell everybody the, the title of your book again and where they can find it. It's called You and Your Guitar. And and the best place actually to get it is on my website. Okay. And it's included in almost all my bundles. Like if you, you know, whatever level you are, you can uh, get the books that go with that. And then you get a super deal on you and your guitar. Mm -hmm. um, 
Or you can just buy you and your guitar. It comes, it's a two book set. It comes with what I call the daily, which is that journal that I referred to. Uh, you can sometimes get it on Amazon. It's going to be more expensive and burdensome. But, but I mean, I, I ship out next day, you know, and, and, uh, and I have all these little bonuses and stuff that you can get with it if you buy it off the site. So you'll get, get into my virtual studio that we discussed last time and so forth. So limitless-guitar.com. Limitlessguitar.com. Or Very cool. Limitless Guitar with Charlotte Adams will come up in a search. That's awesome. So people can really, from all levels, from beginning to doing, to really be progressing, but want to get better or just, you know, want to maybe tweak up a little bit, you know, they can go, they can go to your website for, for anything. And tell us a little about that virtual. You mentioned it in our last conversation about the virtual setting, the learning center that you're going to be creating. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like a library. So I have audio, video, and text lessons for every level and for a number of categories. You know, uh, technical, uh, lead playing, music theory, chord playing, you know, various categories. So you can go in there and you can choose, oh, I'm a, well, actually I have also, there's a page on my site that I say, start here, choose your path. And so mm -hmm. you go in and you find out what level is that you're in right and you're in the level that's green color coded so in the studio you go to the green ones <laughs> you pick the lessons you want but there are also courses in there if you if you want to just do a full course in uh, music theory or ear training or three string chords you know a few courses in there uh and it's it's a subscription but the first month which is you know a lot you can learn in a month is free and then it's at 9.95 a month so it's really cheap and oh, that's cool. just, you know, I really don't want it for my students. If they're not in the studio, I will say just at least get during the time we're working together. You know, if it's a consultation or two, or at least you know get a free one because I refer to it all the time when I'm teaching. It saves you a lot of time and money because I'll say, okay, I, I do this in T three in the studio or in G fourteen. You know, and then they can go through and find those lessons and it will augment or reinforce what we talked about. Oh, that's but very good. I mean, you don't have to be taking lessons. So it's not designed just if you're taking lessons. I'm just saying that's, it's helped me in my teaching a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's great when you can have from, get it from both worlds, you know, it's, it's really good when you can work with the instructor and, you know, like yourself, and then also have the virtual lessons as well. I think it, that's like a double whammy in my book. Yeah, yeah. Comes at you different ways and that's always good. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Wow, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. And I look forward to our next conversation. You bring such yeah. a, a a really um, unique way of of learning and, and not just learning music, but all these principles that you, you talk about can really be applied to lots of things in life, you know, and, you know, it, you know, music is, is, is goes so much deeper and it's so powerful. I don't think people realize how powerful music is. It affects, it affects your, the way you think it affects your mind. It, it affects the way you feel and, and it, and it can actually, it could change your moods and, and, and really make you look at life differently, you know, and, uh, and it makes you, if you learn and, and you're, and you, and especially if you work on your confidence, competence and, and, and commitment, you know, and, and you apply that to music, you could apply those principles to life in general, and it can get you so far in life, you know, just by a comp, you know, taking those three principles and just, and using them as a, as a learning tool to kind of get through life. You could, you know, you can go very far. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to thank you. You're, you're just so great. I mean, I love your insights and the questions you ask and it just kind of makes things it spring gives me something to springboard off of. And it's really fun. Uh, right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. You have a great day. You too. Till next time. Till next time. Thank you. Bye, Stacey. Bye-bye.